And uh, I'm going to just go through a bunch of these stories. And uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So we asked, uh, uh, Martin actually did the, the working. I, I asked around and it, I never got a response. But um, a lot of the Facebook groups are closed to non-IBM people. So uh, I, Martin at least had worked at IBM and was able to get somewhere. And uh, you know, I, it's surprising, you know, I guess in our age group we don't do a lot of social media. So <laughs> it's not, not that surprising. But uh, you know, everybody needs to talk to their grandchildren. So they're all there. Um, and so we just asked for stories, and we got, uh, Martin added some, uh, well, was Grady Booch is a famous old guy. Uh, if it weren't for Twitter, I would never have intentionally <coughs> found myself in dialogue with moon landing deniers, flat earth enthusiasts, holocaust deniers, white supremacists, rabid misogynists, homosexuals, and climate change deniers. But we, the OS2 Warp lovers, restore your faith in humanity. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> Changing the tone of that a little bit. Maybe <laughs> would say, maybe. Yeah. Brady Budge is the inventor of the UML. Uh, the how do you graphic the how do you how do you draw the object to um, understand <coughs> programming with objects? He he invented. UML is yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Universal modeling, but he invented yeah. a lot of things yeah, before I that. He's you know, a celebrity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Grady Booch pretty much invented how we define computer languages. So, <laughs> this is too small to read, isn't it? Really. Um, Wayne, Wayne Delia, Gallagher, and Whittle were the leaders of the internal grassroots campaign called Team OS2. Okay, so he's recalling the Team OS2. Uh, a group of technical experts and wannabe experts, yeah, that's me, uh, who <laughs> recognize the power and flexibility of OS2 compared to Windows, but we're all extremely frustrated by IBM's traditional approach to marketing, which we know how that worked out, uh, to wait until advanced level operating system matures and then roll out our product and expect everyone to quickly migrate over based on IBM's name alone with minimal advertising. Oh, yeah. We did whatever we could to spread the word and grow the market share and as most grassroots campaign go, it was doing fairly well until IBM pulled the plug on much of the effort. My small contribution was a change to my voicemail away message. Hi, this is Wayne Delia, extension whatever, department whatever. I am away from my desk and unable to return your call. While you're waiting for me to call back, why not install IBM's OS2 operating system on your workstation? <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, should I go ahead and read all these? I mean, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Andy McLeod, I don't know who, who these guys are, really, really. Sometimes they recognize the names, sometimes not. In the 1990s, my <coughs> wife worked in the software group marketing, specifically on OS2, and I had the opportunity to accompany her to Comdex in Las Vegas in three consecutive years. One year, I was even heavily involved with Team OS2, a volunteer grassroots group who installed OS2 at vendor's request on their systems on the show floor. In fact, I did the first install that year. That year was a big year for Microsoft and Windows 95. Microsoft had a giant booth in an amphitheater in a prime spot in the convention center, and they were there to show the power of multitasking. To a standing room only crowd, they fired up their top of the line PC on a giant screen and brought up three windows, formatting a diskette, doing a folder listing, and a graphic window with a bouncing line. The bouncing line halted and stuttered, but all three tasks continued more or less at the same time, and the crowd went wild. Meanwhile, in an IBM booth farther back in the convention center, there sat a pedestal with a decent PC for the time, running OS2. The demo showed two simultaneous multimedia windows, a computational task, and a graphic programming, all moving smooth as silk. Occasionally, someone would stop and take a look. <coughs> P.S. I still have my Salmon Team OS2 shirt. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, how many times did you have to explain salmon, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you put a picture, yeah. Steve Gass. I was a big fan of it. I thought IBM should have given it away. If they had, I don't think there would be such a, a market for the Ubuntu software and the like. Yeah. Good to hear about OS2 Warp. After leaving IBM, I ran many OS2 classes for British Airways in 1995 and 96. I also had my hernia in, <laughs> inducing hernia inducing PS2 Model 60 at home for a test with a massive 300 meg 
disk partitioned into three systems, OS2 V1, OS2 Warp, and Windows NT. <laughs> <laughs> Had it still running five or so years ago when I donated it to the IBM Museum at Hursley. We didn't know about that museum, did we? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's where he worked, yeah. Where, I... Michael Lamb. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Oh. And does anyone remember the number of 3.5 diskettes needed to load the early OS2 releases onto your PS2? After shoving all those in, add the COM Manager 2 diskettes um, <laughs> to get your PS2 connected to the mainframe. We decided to reverse engineer the installs and came up with our a bit faster mainframe delivery method we named Grand Prix. Saved us and others a boatload of time during that push to get it installed at the site. Mm. Yeah, uh, sad. I work. Jay Curtis, I worked at the Personal Systems Competency Center in <coughs> South, Lakes, South Lake, Texas from 1993 to 1995. Wow, that, <laughs> well, during that time, in addition to becoming a certified netware engineer, I was also one of the guinea pigs for the certified OS2 engineer program. And that's back of the room there. Uh, I was also one of the guinea pigs, oh, I'm sorry, I was in the first cohort to take and pass the tests that were later rolled out to the general public. <coughs> During my time there, I was fortunate to have two articles published in the Personal Systems Magazine, Remote Program Load of OS2 Warp from Netware 312, co-authored by Seam Bumgardner, I remember him too, <coughs> controlling the OS2 desktop from the file server, for which I was uh, the sole author. All of the issues have been scanned and can be found in the Personal Systems Magazine. I always liked OS2, too bad it didn't hold its own. Uh, Charles, that everybody gets their own picture. As, as one of the critical situation managers for large accounts, I got stuck with an OS2 APAR that was closed uh, can. Uh, and you were able to drag a document on the desktop to the print object, and the document would print. We had a large account that would not accept can. Once I ex could reproduce the failure, I went over to development and showed them the failure. They immediately grabbed the mouse and could not duplicate the fa failure. This is where I, the fun started. I told them that as long as I held the mouse, they could call print or not print. It was a magic show. Every time they called not print, I would drop the document on the print object and it would not print. <laughs> Turns out if you went over another icon in the desktop before dropping the document on a print object, it would not print. <laughs> they fixed the problem in no time at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dave Battelle. I was team OS2 and went to every fall convex and was at the Tucson site for COC. I don't know, COC for OS2. Fun times, including f the Fiesta Bowl. I have several s uh, salmon t-shirts, several t-shirts, a jacket from Condex, a ball cap, and who knows what else. Mm. <laughs> okay, there's pictures of them. Monty Copeland. In a Red Lion pub in Boynton Beach, Florida, I swapped my OS2 t-shirt for this Rex t-shirt. Mm. I can't remember the guy's name, but it must be on the, sh on the shirt. <laughs> I don't use OS2 anymore, but I do use object-oriented Rex on Windows and Regina Rex on Raspberry Pi. I, I, I knew Monty, well, from internal chat, he was in charge of releasing fixed packs. Oh, okay. Got in the fix pack and release. Oh, I didn't know his last name, that's, that's who that was. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Monty. Yeah, yeah I knew Monty. <coughs> last name. Okay, I can't, I, I don't know how to back up. <laughs> Jack Friedman, in the mid-90s, I built an OS2 server on a Mod 80. I used a SCSI adapter to connect eight one gig hard drives. As OS2 had to verify each sector on boot up, it took three and a half hours to complete the boot sequence before I didn't use the operating system on any of the applications. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I started on a Model 80. <laughs> In the early 90s, I had three PS2 Model 80 OS2 token ring servers and one Lotus Note server. I was Asia Pacific's LAN rep to CCDN coordinated naming conventions throughout AP, exclusively OS2. Updates were laborious, overnight transfer from a tools disk and download of over 20 diskettes for in installation of an OS2 plus LAN server. <laughs> More IBMers. Hugo Hatzler. At that time, customers found it best. Maybe IBM should have sold it for a little money and the world would look different today. Marge Ferretti. My husband, Dante Ferretti, used to be a beta tester for OS2 testing apps, working on the OS2 platform. Doug Hyland, just imagine, if IBM had allowed anyone to make a PC with OS2, I would believe it would still be out there. Mm. <laughs> Mike Fox, 
I didn't work on OS2, but whenever a friend or family member asked for my computer buying recommendation, I would steer them toward it. <laughs> Big mistake because it made me their de facto tech support. <laughs> I did learn from that that OS2 was not suitable for consumer use. Dual boot PCs were the absolute worst of both worlds. Yes, I, I agree with him on that. <laughs> Richard Kurtz. Hi, Martin. I'm probably Martin. Uh, been, been, <laughs> been a while. Hi, Jack. I'm from the Poughkeepsie site. Marty was my, oh, Marty was my manager there. Um, best department I was ever in. After the 1994 bloodbath, I managed to get a job at, in Boca with Ben Rogers at the OS2 service pack, fix pack group. When I got there, the interpretive language used being was exec2, which was good, but I so, sort of forced Mike Kolashaw's Rex to be the default, and the rest was history. No plans, no reviews, I just did it. Power and opportunity combined to make an awesome tool available for all OS2 users. Mike was a certified genius. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Richard, I also met Richard. He was also on the fixed pack uh, so, packaging and releasing uh, okay. uh, after months. Huh. <coughs> yeah, interesting. Bjorn Mietgaard still got a set of two uh, two 2.1 installation floppies just looking for hardware old enough to accept them. <laughs> hey, oh, I, got, I got eight of them. <laughs> Remember the OS2 work forum on IBM tools? The excitement was palpable. Yeah. Uh, Dan Slutsky. I was the lead for internal support at, for the IBM Boca site and went there often for solutions to problems. The developers were very helpful. <coughs> yeah. All right. More. Uh, OS2 was the first operating system to come packaged with internet access. The IBM Internet Connection was one of our products at the time. Sadly, the fall of OS2 was a simple lack of applications to take advantage of the power of the platform offered at the time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that nobody needs internet. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, people said some weird things. Yeah. <laughs> Skip Richards, the only operating system that ever sponsored a bowl game, OS2 Fiesta Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, uh, okay, Barbara Pinkston Barker. I was there, the Fiesta Bowl that year, the University of Colorado versus Notre Dame. <laughs> Lined up with the January kickoff for the OS2 software group in Scottsdale. Eventually our little group was merged with the entire software group. Greg Mason, Sorry. I was... I was there the was another anecdote <laughs> about that IBM Fiesta Bowl. Yeah. It seems like IBM didn't have the idea of how that the sponsorship of that kind of events goes. So IBM buy all all the sponsorship. And other people will say, Well, I want to also include my ad, my ad and they say, No, I buy all all the sponsorship and all the people there was like sick of all the OS2 publicity because it was constantly and they didn't change any, oh. any two other publicity. Oh. So it was like a, a beginner's mistake or noob mistake. Yeah. yeah oh that. boy. I, I don't remember when I read it. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, Greg Mason. I was the build and integration lead for OS2 1.3 and 2.0. I was the one who delivered OS2 2.0 to R.R. Donnelly for replication. Mm -hmm. IBM chartered a Learjet from Boca Raton to Lafayette, Indiana to, the de to deliver the Golden Master CDs and diskettes to be manufactured. I still have a shrink wrap copy of the commemorative OS2 product that was given to all the people who worked on OS2 2.0. We, we have that somewhere in the OS2 museum. We ha did, are not showing it today. <laughs> I, was, I think we still have a Team OS2 t-shirt. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> Richard Kurtz again. Okay. Doing great, Greg. Retired gre back to Florida after eight years in Austin. Remember the stacks of pizza boxes when pe the push came to the get 2.0 out the door? All-nighters, 24-hour shifts, sleeping in cubicles? I didn't do that, but I know you and many, many developers and testers did. Boca was a great place to work, and the team spirit was incredible. Hey, Chip Singleton. If you run into Stephen Levine of Arkanoa, tell him I said hi. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Remind him that I was the IBMer that coordinated with him, John Connolly and others at CNA. Great multi-vendor effort and a really creative solution. Mark Esposito. I worked at IBM Burlington, and we used OS2 to run our SPC process control charts. It worked flawlessly, and it was very fast. After moving away from OS2, all the users always complained how the newer version never <coughs> measured up their performance when on OS2. 
Yeah. Anyway, Burlington is the, uh, their uh, chip was. chip fab. Was their chip fab? Yeah. Okay. Jim Starkovich. My last job at IBM in 1993 was to call PC manufacturers and try to convince them to preload OS2 on their machines. I had zero sales, and that is because Bill Gates and company had locked us out. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they did, and they had to pay a dollar. <laughs> Larry Zafrin. When IBM first got into services and, and it was handled, uh, handled out as if, if the sales branch office, I was a sales manager approved an 84, uh, 40 hours contract to upgrade a server to the latest level of OS2. Simple contract, so I thought. Turns out we had a statement that we would get the application to work. The new level of OS2 rounded off to the 10th significant digit, don't remember which one, while we, the previous version was the 12th. It was a scientific application and it made a difference. The statement, uh, getting the application to work <laughs> made it fixed price. I had a, a service engineer on site for almost a year we were all learning. No one really cared since we were sales and service. It was just a phase. We laughed about it in the uh, BO, but it was a lesson I learned and remember to this day. Um, well, when, when IBM shifted to services, it was a big hit. Uh -huh. Because IBM used to sell the mainframe, and it, it used to be so expensive, or, and, and it has a very margin, a very, yeah. uh, a very good profit. You can put all the people there that you want with the mainframe. Yeah. But when they switch to services, to service strategy, they uh, they also get a lot of these problems. Yeah. Yeah. Because they didn't know how to calculate service and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. At that at that time. They okay. never got any better. Well. <laughs> <laughs> now now they know that they had to charge per hour. So. <laughs> so okay. At that time it was. A no fixed price. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Vicky Conway, I did the Team OS2 newsletter, the the OS2 website which uh, as the second site on the web with IBM.com at the end. Help Janet run, T oh, Janet, run Team OS2 at, at many Comdex. Still have stickers, the flag, the, a box, some of the gold lapel pins, magazines. Oh, and my manager hosted in Austin the very job, the very first IBM-wide internet meeting for all divisions. I loved my OS2 job. Michael Dedina. I was hired by IBM to work on compilers for OS2. Pre-release versions were buggy and we were getting new builds every week. As I recall, an OS2 <coughs> build considered, consisted of a big stack of 20 floppy disk images, which I had to download and copy to physical floppies once a week so it could be installed. Painful. Uh, Janet Crenshaw. I'm not sure if this will work, but we had a Team OS2 in Action video made at uh, Convex one year, I think it was 1994, because I was laid off in 1995 and missed that one. Uh, I just converted it to digital. And we have that video. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lynn Wheeler. Uh, this, this is a good one. Someone in OS2 tried asking Kingston and Endicott how, about how they did scheduling and dispatching. Since I had done it as an undergraduate in the 1960s, originally for CP67 uh, CMS, in the initial morph from CP67 to BM370, they simplified and or dropped a lot of stuff from CP67. Then customers were asking for all my stuff from CP67, so I had to do it again a decade after having done it as an undergraduate in the 60s. Yeah. And then he has these email messages that he copied from 1987. <laughs> like, you don't see a lot of email messages from 1987. <laughs> and I, I won't read the, the email messages, but it, it's clear they were uh, pre-OS2 1.0. We didn't have internet. <laughs> no, no, but email had been around for decades, but, you know, the number of people who had it was very small. <laughs> yeah, IBM had it with the mainframes connected, and they sent message with a, a blue screen, no, not blue screen, it's green screen. Yeah. They used to send emails. Sure, and the universities had it, and eventually DEC and had it, but you know, but it started in the early 60s. But yeah, it's the internal VM. But data. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, when you showed me this, I was like, I was looking at the date and going, they're talking about before OS2 1.0. This yeah. is the first yeah. scheduler. Yeah, <laughs> there wasn't before. And, and uh, my first, my first uh, scheduled uh, uh, computer was a CP67. So, <laughs> very interesting. 
Thank you. <laughs> well, then we have the video also. Should I should I give it a shot? Yes, just connect the speakers. Okay. Let's give it a shot. about the evolution to email. I had a telex machine in my house, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was originally Western Union telex machine. An old I uh, was at ASR thirty three. And the then it got converted over to the full screen board. Thing. And then oh. AT and T got oh, it. it on there. And I actually had an email. Just double click the video. It's on, on the black side of the black area. Email people. Double click faster. Double click faster. Or else you can send and receive telex. Oh, sorry. Can I go back? Yeah. Yeah. Go back. Wait. No. Stop. Stop. Go back. All right. There we go. Turn this on. Ah, is the light on? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. This is gonna sound bad because it's you know from a long time ago. I have made it a habit. That's pretty much what I do. I will tell you the only reason that OS2 2.1 is alive today is because of users groups, Team OS2, and grassroots people. It is certainly not because of IBM's incredible marketing skills, okay? Vegas, Nevada. Let me tell you, the excitement is growing minute by minute for the um, introduction and everybody is waiting for Warp to come out. Hi, my name is Dave Daniel. I'm from Tucson, Arizona. I came to Comic this year to show my appreciation to IBM and OS2 for the great product they put out. My name is John Tickweiler from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis? Yeah. You came all the way from Minneapolis here. Can you tell us about that? Well, I got up at 2 o'clock Minneapolis, well, Las Vegas time. It was 4 o'clock in Minneapolis and I've been going since then. Trucking to the airport and hopping on a, uh, a flight that was packed. And then got dropped off on the backside of the convention center, had to walk through, and security caught me and finally wandered over here. <laughs> that was an adventure. But the reason I got involved in OS2 was to keep my marriage together. Why is that? Because my husband got so involved in it, he was on the computer constantly, day in and day out, and I never got to see him. So now do you guys get to spend more time together? No. Because now I'm on my computer and he's on his computer. But we have a good time with it. I really am enjoying it. I've just recently got into it and started it. And it's really interesting and I, I do like it compared to the other DOS systems and operating systems I've used. Well, Team OS2 for me is a, a way of getting information. I've, I've been with Team OS2 for about three years now. It's a great, it's a great organization with a bunch of good people and, and it, I think it reflects the uh, best of the new IBM. My name is Mike Purcell. I'm from Salt Lake City. What do you do in Salt Lake? What I do in Salt Lake City is I'm a radio talk show host about personal computers and I'm also a, an OS2 consultant as a profession. Team OS2 are people who, who do what IBM does as a profession. We do it by faith. We try to talk as many people as we can into OS2 if they have a system that's appropriate for them. And, and how about your use of OS2? I take care of him, and that's my main responsibility, and that takes care of OS2, too. My name's Melissa Driver, and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Team OS2 is a bunch of crazy maniacs who like to throw their money away uh, on OS2 because it's the best operating system that you can that you can buy. It's it's here, it's now, it's blowing the doors off of Windows 95, what it's going to be, it's here now. So you came all the way from South Africa to Las Vegas? Absolutely. We have a team OS2 back in South Africa and uh, we, we just wanted to link up so got in last night and uh, started working this morning. We've got basically two teams set up now. We've got a nice team down at Cape Town 
uh, about 50 users in one Johannesburg is growing now as well, probably about 80 users. Uh, we just get people in and all the, all the guys really love us too, they come and join us and they work with us doing all the kinds of things that, that, they, that we want them to do. Uh, the, the prominent thing at that particular show was in fact Team Osh 2 in their very nice looking t-shirts. We got Brian and Les here. Two hours ago I sent them out to do an install. I don't hear from them for two hours. They come back and told me they did two installs. This is what I love about these guys. <laughs> That's great. You came all the way from Canada. That's right. How'd you get here? Uh, we came down in RV. Drove down through um, Washington and Oregon, hit our first snow in California. That's not what Canadians come down to the States for. <laughs> but we had a great time. How long did the trip take? Um, 30 hours, three days. I, they gave me a t-shirt and uh, I, I, I get um, bribed easily. <laughs> I'm Brian Simpson, I'm from Niwa, Colorado, and I'm trying to get people as warped as I am. <laughs> I'm a pastor of a local church and a, and a consultant. Uh, uh, part-time and uh, also I do some tech support part-time. I'm a real evangelist but, <laughs> but they call me monster. I'm from here in Las Vegas. They call you monster. Yeah, how do you get that name? Well, I guess I earned it. What is this Team OS 2? We're the Pink Ninjas. We go around, we uh, offer to install software and people's hardware prove to them that OS2 is really the way of the future. I'm here to spread the word of OS2 throughout the land, the land, throughout the land. Why don't you guys describe for us how you go about doing this installation? The first thing we look for is hardware. As long as they're running a computer, they are capable of running warp. Once we get there, we start off by uh, pulling out <coughs> the arsenal of equipment that we get to carry around, which includes a uh, backpack CD-ROM, complete with uh, the CDs that we get to use for the installation. We uh, proceed to add OS2 warp itself, as well as the bonus pack of uh, IBM's support products. From there, we're going to go ahead, attach the backpack CD-ROM to the customer, to the client's computer, at which point they'll uh, begin the installation, booting from floppies, which are also supplied with it, and uh, the install should take about a half an hour, possibly 45 minutes. The customer should be up and running very quickly with uh, all that they can do. Once we're done, we stick one of these little things on their uh, monitor, a little flyer, get warped. <laughs> and we leave them a little sheet with the uh, hotline number in case they have any problems or questions that we weren't able to answer at the time. And they just call up and the ring's here in the trailer. And uh, then we radio in. Any, any problems we have, they contact us directly by radio. We're quickly available. We're also available by pager in the event we're out of radio range. And uh, for any of the support problems that we need that those don't cover, we've also got uh, full cellular telephone support with four wandering telephones and full support here at the base. I'm Arlen Pachenik. I am from Alberta. Oh, we've got a half a dozen installs going on right now. Would you like to see one? Yeah. All right, well, follow me. I saw that. Uh, we passed them, so I'll uh, go back towards them. Thanks. We're installing uh, work onto uh, this uh, company's uh, PC. Well, we had been in here a couple of times trying to link up with them, and uh, they were definitely interested in, in having OS2 on one of their systems. Okay. I'm an attorney. I'm here uh, on vacation installing OS2 for fun.
those people putting together solutions that work. Well, I was real impressed yesterday. Uh, before, we've seen the SWAT teams come around from our friends at Microsoft and offer mice to whoever. And uh, yesterday, uh, these guys came over and said, hey, can we put up work for you? Everything will run faster. Orville Ward, I'm a service account rep for uh, Dell Computers. These guys are really good at uh, helping us to get to know the product, get familiar with it. They are excellent at promoting the product to let us know uh, the benefits of using the uh, OS2. Is, and I would also have to say that uh, without these guys, we probably wouldn't know a whole lot of, about, about OS2. My name is John Rothkib. I'm a system analyst for IPC Corporation. They promote it everywhere you go. Bookstores, computer stores, uh, shopping malls, grocery stores, anytime it might come up. They're talking about it. They're going to people's houses to help install it. They're having meetings about it. Uh, it's It's been a lifesaver for OS2. Thanks to Team OS2, IPC got warped. Well, just a few minutes ago, I was over at the uh, IBM area watching a warp demo. Uh, very crowded area. A lot of people were watching watching the demo. Uh, somebody nudged me on the elbow and said, uh, maybe he needs one of those. And I turned around and Bill Gates is standing right next to me. Watched the entire presentation. And when he was all done, he kind of smiled a little bit, and he and his entourage walked away. And I was thinking to myself, gee, Bill, you're wearing a white shirt and a tie. Maybe you need to get warped. Thank <laughs> you.